Hi little ones, good morning. Today I'm going to read you the book The Octonauts and the Great Ghost Reef by Miyomi. It was a clear and sunny day under the tropical sea when Captain Barnacle's bear was testing his snorkel. Peso Penguin was shampooing Claudius. Tunip the Vegemal was packing a picnic basket. Dashy Dog was picking out sunglasses. Oh, Quasi Kitten was taking a cat nap. Dr. Shellington was modeling his new swimsuit. Tweak Bunny was changing a spark plug. Professor Inkling was studying his travel guide when said, Alert, alert, alert. The crew quickly assembled in the Octopods headquarters to find Professor Inkling frantically pointing to the eerie landscape outside. Octonauts, the small Dumbo octopus exclaimed. We are all excited about our vacation to the Great Reef City. But something peculiar has transpired. Well, shiver me timbers, everything is white. Quasi puzzled out loud. This place looks like a ghost town. This city is built on top of a giant coral reef. Normally, reefs look colorful rocks, look like colorful rocks, where many plants and animals make their homes. Dr. Shellington informed the crew. This is not at all what I expected. We need to find out what happened here, Captain Barnacles decided. The crew cautiously explored the silent streets of the city. As they passed abandoned buildings and empty houses, they caught glimpses of pale shapes and heard strange creaks and moans. Hmm, what happened here? Did you see that? Did you feel that? Did you hear that? Oh, I'm sure there's a perfectly good scientific explanation for all this, Shellington said nervously. Eventually, they came upon an old turtle nudging a large trunk out of his front door. Noticing the name on the mailbox, Barnacles politely asked, Excuse me, Mr. Slostash, could you tell us what happened here? The turtle slowly looked at the polar bear up and down and gave a low sigh. Hmm. I'm afraid it's all a great mystery, Mr. Slostash began his tale. When I first moved here as a young wisp snapper, the reef was famous for its bright colors and seagrass aplenty to eat. As time went by, more animals came to live here. They built fancy buildings, theaters and shops. This place was quite the hotspot. I guess everyone was so busy that no one noticed the corals beneath the city started turning white and brittle. Bit by bit, it spread. The turtle gestured sadly to his own home. Now even my house is falling over. Nobody knows what caused this. Some even say the city is haunted. I'm the last to go. It's just too cold for my old bones. Dashi patted the turtle shell and asked, Is there anything we can do to help? Mr. Slostash smiled in appreciation. Thank you, young lady. I remember a beach from my childhood. Just two shakes of a turtle's tail from here. I could certainly use a hand moving my rock collection there. The octonauts packed Mr. Slostash's belongings into a cup A and then the ship took off with a big swoosh. Arriving at the sandy dunes of the beach... Barnacles looked around and smiled. I'm sure it's a nice and warm beach. Everyone seems to be enjoying the sun. I forgot how shallow the water's here. An old turtle like me needs more shelter, Mr. Slowstash fretted as he tucked into his shell. Let's keep looking. How about this mangrove forest? Dashi asked. The trees give cover to the animals and even drop fruit down for food. Shaking his head stubbornly, the turtle persisted. I don't see if my favorite seagrass. Luckily, seagrass meadows grow right near mangroves, Peso announced cheerfully. Look at those happy dugongs tending the fields. The water is so murky here. Not clean and clear like my old reef, fussed the turtle. Er... He sure is picky. I need a vacation from this vacation, Quasi muttered. Flipping his tail in frustration, Slostash lamented. 
I never realized how special my reef was until now. There's no place quite like it. If we can't find you a new home, we'll just have to figure out what's wrong with your old one, Barnacle said confidently. Let's head back and solve this ghost reef mystery. Returning to the city, the crew found Tweak, using the gubdi to prop up a row of teetering buildings. Watch out, the bunny shouted with concern. The city is starting to fall. We need to do something fast. Just then, Shellington ran up to the crew and exclaimed, Octonauts, while you were away, I discovered something very fascinating. The reef isn't rock at all. It's made up of thousands of little creatures. The coral is alive. Does that mean they are not ghosts? Peso asked timidly. Shellington shook his head and explained, No, but they are cold and hungry. When I was studying the healthy reef outside of town, I learned that each coral has algae inside that. Give it oh the algae inside that give it color and help it make food. Algae are plants and plants need light, Inkling added. The buildings must be blocking out the sun and causing this coral to give up on its algae. So that's why the reef turned white, Octonauts. We have to move these buildings, Barnacles declared. Aha! News of the Octonauts' discovery spread quickly and animals from far and wide returned to help. Together they lifted off pieces of the city to uncover the coral beneath. Everyone worked to build new homes around the coral instead of on the top. Slowly, the reef became colorful and healthy again. Yellow, orange, red, corals, blue, purple, pink too. Thank you for solving this mystery. Now I have learned that we need to care for the reef just like it cares for us. The turtle gratefully presented each of the crew with a rock from his prized collection. For all your hard work, Slostash added with a wink. Boo! The end. Let's meet again with another story tomorrow. Bye, bye, little ones.